Hello traders, welcome to the LFB and our global video charting review. This is for week commencing the 23rd of January 2010. There may be increased volatility as the Forex trading week gets underway after news that Ireland's Green political party pulled out of the ruling coalition which is expected to bring forward the general election from March and is very likely to send bond spreads soaring as the market finds fair value on the Irish rescue package. The Euro had found stability on recent bailout, rescue, lifeboat deals that have been cobbled together by the International Monetary Fund and the ECB, but we've now got a question mark on fair value on Euro dollar. We've got the S&P 500 chart up here and we can see from the news headlines, the soundbite headlines, and from the client notes that have been reporting on this, that each 24-hour period of trade is very much dominated by three eight-hour regional open and closes. We've got ever-decreasing time frames that the market's moving on. We've moved from going to the 80s and the 90s. We had weekly trends. We went through the Y2Ks where we had on a day-to-day -day trend that would hold and now we get in to the near-term time frames and the global markets are just getting tighter and tighter in their correlations but also tighter and tighter on the time frame that that things move on. Taking a look at euro dollar we can see that although the euro found that stability from the deals from the International Monetary Fund and the ECB. We also can see that the Euro found buyers last week as China jawboned their support for the common currency as well. That buy-in resolve will now be thoroughly tested as spreads and credit default swaps on European government debt are going to go through a round of revaluation that's unlikely to allow euro dollar to move too much higher without a test of support down here at the 3250 area which is the breakout point and when we look at the analysis of all of these pairs we will see that these daily charts simple moving averages which are the solid lines green is the 50 day orange is the 100 day these are very likely to come back into play as the market now revalues what's going to happen on the Irish rescue package if there's a coalition government that's now failed to follow through but also then the peripheral countries the Greek the Portuguese the Italian uh, the Spanish and although they're boring headlines this is what's moved euro dollar over the course of the last year Adding to the test of resolve for those who are long euro will be the rumblings that the US administration may be considering a repeat of the Homeland Investment Act that in 2005 when it was launched offered a tax holiday to multinational companies who would repatriate overseas funds back to the US. Now, HIA sparked a run higher in the dollar in 2005, and it may do the same now if the sound bites about the Homeland Investment Act follow through into headlines, which in turn follows through into price action. Traders have seen a swing towards buying and selling the rumour, so buy or sell the rumour, subsequently then reverse in positions when the news hits. The old adage, buy the, the rumour, sell the news, is very much in play. And this could be another instigator that moves the dollar index off 78 support, which is a triple bottom on the dollar index. We've been down here through until November of last year. And every time on this triple bottom, we've moved back higher to test 80, 82, which are the January highs we've already hit. Global commodity markets have already offered a solid test of support. When we look at gold, we saw a 30-minute period of trade that started the gold drop, turned into two one-hour periods that held themselves through the Asian stroke European crossover. But it does now look as though the commodity markets have offered that solid test of support last week. But now this week, that's going to test the correlation of higher equity markets moving in line with higher commodities, which have been moving up on Federal Reserve manipulation.
as much as they've been moving up on a demand-led move due to global expansion and sustainable economic growth. So we've had a lot of things happening with this Bernanke put. Mr. Bernanke, the head of the Federal Reserve, has put a strategy in place that floats all asset classes. We saw it in 2008, we saw it in 2009, we saw it in 2010, where all asset classes are backstopped and we had higher equities, we had higher commodities, we had higher dollar values, we had our higher interest rate values and we kind of lost sense with the reality of what was normal. This is the new norm. What we've got at this point in time are still highly correlated global markets and we've still got a high inverse correlation between the dollar and equities, equities up, dollar down in general. But that over a 12 month period has been running at 95%. There are times, there's a 5% period during the course of a 12 month time frame that this correlation doesn't work at all. And I think we've just gone through that. We've gone through equities moving up at the same time the dollar was moving up. And it's only been this last week of trade that Euro's been able to break higher through that 32.50. And that is being the instigator of dollar index moves lower. Getting back to the S&P, this week could be a pivotal swing point on all global markets with the price points of note on S&P futures being 1265. This is price point that we need to look at. This is the 20 day simple moving average on the S&P 500. This is a futures market runs 24 hours a day. But if we can break below 1265, hold there for a session and then continue the selling in the next session, then it could be that the dollar index will start to push higher and the major pairs will start to push lower with some dollar strength. So we're keeping an eye on 12.65 on the S&P. It's been an amazing record over the course of the last three months as to how many days that have concurrently closed in the red. It's been incredible. And it doesn't matter whether it's manipulation, it doesn't matter whether it's global demand, it doesn't matter what the reason for that is, it's happened. The real test as a tenured trader that's seen 30 years of global market trade will be how strongly does the support hold? Because we, we saw it 2008, 2009, 2010. We saw periods of each of those years that the equity market went on a bull run with no volume. But we also saw what happened in each of those years when the pullbacks to support failed to hold because there wasn't enough market participation. So we're keeping an eye on 12.65 on the dollar index. We're keeping an eye on the gold markets. We've got to keep a real good view and clarity around 13.35 on gold because if we can't now get back above 13.50 we're very like to, likely to see solid tests of 13.35 and if gold drops below that we will start to see equities will probably have been another instigator going low and we will probably see some strong US dollar buying in the dollar index with the euro being probably the currency that would take the brunt of that selling if it is going to follow through and it will very likely be a fundamental instigator and so over the last three months the only thing that's really moved euro dollar has been sound by headlines and then we're going to be looking for oil to be able to hold at the 8850 area on oil which has been a very important swing point and at 88 we've got the 50 day simple moving average as well so price points of note 12.65 S&P, 13.35 on gold, and then undoubtedly on oil, 88.50. If they all hold as support, we're likely to see a continuation of the chop and churn as the markets just revalue this European debt question. If those markets do drop through that support area, we would very likely see a sustained period of US dollar buying. Euro dollar's been in an upwards trajectory after consolidating during the course of previous sessions, but we've seen this move higher that broke from the 50-day, now closed above the 100-day moving average around this 34.50 area. The increase was seen twofold after the jawboning from China that they will be supporting Euro 
auctions and debt auctions and buying euro dollar but also after German business confidence unexpectedly rose to really strong numbers in January. Looking at the Great British Pound, got a lot of noise going on. Great British Pound has turned very, very volatile. Look how jagged this chart looks. One hour chart doesn't often look as jagged as that, not being able to get too far. But Pound was able to par recent losses from the previous sessions and now sits just above that 1,600 level with main resistance for the pair at 60.65 which was the high we had on January the 17th. Would be very very surprised to see cable break and hold 16.65 and would be looking if there are tests up towards that 16.065 area then we would be looking to sell from there. So Pound at this point in time is in a, a seller test of resistance mode as far as we can see. Aussie dollar uh, being very quiet, both dollar and, um, so Aussie dollar and dollar CAD, they've been impacted by their daily chart simple moving averages. We can see 50 day moving average, 20 day moving average. We've also seen Aussie impacted a little bit by the drop in gold. This drop lower does correlate with that move in gold. When we look at dollar CAD lost its correlation to oil just a little bit. Um, but Aussie dollars kept that gold correlation going but dollar CAD just consolidating around the 20 day moving average with very little going on outside of intraday movement got to be careful with CAD it's only moving in the European and US sessions not getting an awful lot out of it outside of those times interest rate link pairs dollar Swiss and dollar yen both of them look very very volatile dollar Swiss has gone nowhere but then look at the intraday movement and these are linked to those Treasury markets and Treasury markets are going through a complete and utter revaluation on fair value because of the Federal Reserve's action and price action points that are now creating havoc on a day-to-day -day basis and are the main instigator for these daily trend movements coming down to eight hour trend movements as well. All of the major pairs continue to signal to us that a swing point may be getting formed on not just the currencies but also as a result of the global risk and interest rate markets and long-term sustainable moves may be starting to build as the global market finds fair value on risk and global growth potential and uh, although we're not perma balls on the US dollar by any means although we understand that the US debt situation is at chronic levels it could very well be you'll see a sustained period now of US dollar buying whilst revaluation of debt and risk takes place we will be signaling you as the week unfolds